Hello everyone and welcome to this video which will try to evaluate how much the French and the British were different during the Napoleonic Wars. Today we will talk about two tremendous paintings from the Napoleonic War. I chose two victories because a lot more messages are being conveyed. Just to recall, Napoleonic Wars were from 1803 to 1815 with the defeat at Waterloo. Although everything really started in 1789 with the French Revolution. The first attempt to crush the French newly born Republic in 1793 when Austria, the Kingdom of Sardinia, the Kingdom of Naples, Prussia, Spain and United Kingdom formed the first coalition. French measures such as the general conscription, total war, and military reforms contributed to the defeat of the First Coalition. General Napoleon Bonaparte forced the Austrians to sign the Treaty of Campo Formio, which granted peace, but it failed in 1793 and France had to declare once again war to Austria. But no more history, let's see some painting. The first picture would be the famous Battle of Austerlitz, painted by François Gérard, a French painter born in Rome in 1770 and deceased in 1837. He was asked to paint the Battle of Austerlitz by the Salon in 1808, so three years after this battle but it was finally finished in 1810. This painting sets the after battle when the allied troops of the Austrian and the Russian either drowned in the frozen marshes or were killed during their assault on the French positions. Austerlitz is also known as the Battle of the Three Emperors. Napoleon for the French Francis II for the Austrian, and Alexander I for the Russians. On this painting, our attention is immediately attracted by the center of the picture, Napoleon and General Rapp. This is done by an ingenious ray of light that breaks through the cloudy, smoky sky. This light is like a divine light breaking through the darkness. Napoleon is being described as a meteor, a celestial person that inspires everyone, like a beacon in the dark. In this picture we can also recognize the Prince Repnin among the Russian prisoners. Here, General Rapp is bringing back the flag, 50 of them, and the cannon, 180, which will be later melted in the column of Vandal. We also see the battle results, as if the painter refused to make a clear, nice and deathless battle. We see the wounded soldiers crawling in between the horse feet, the broken artillery, the corpses, the broken weapons, sword, spears, guns and cannonballs. In the middle of this confusion, in the middle of the battle itself or what had been the battle, involves Napoleon and his glory, this divine scene. In the background, we can see the frozen marshes with the soldiers going through them. The broken Austrian and Russian army? Maybe. According to the painter, this officer kept on complaining to be dishonored because he lost his artillery battery. At this moment, Napoleon retorted, Calm down, young sir and be aware that there is no shame to be vanquished by French. Like any Napoleonic paintings, the Emperor is marble-like, whereas the others expresses emotions. General Rapp expresses happiness and glory. The Prince Repnin expresses frustration. Second painting will show Napoleon's best nemesis ever. The Duke Wellington. This painting shows Wellington on his horse giving orders to his men. 
in the Battle of Waterloo. It was painted by Robert Alexander Hillingford, born in London in 1828 and died in 1904. He is an English painter specialized in historical paintings. For the little anecdote, the battle was not at Waterloo itself. It was in the sector of Laisne, brain Allud, and Genappe in Belgium. The name of Waterloo was given by Wellington when he declared in his letter the defeat of the French. He wrote that letter in the village of Waterloo, who is at 12 kilometers from the theater of the operations. On this picture, we immediately see Wellington, all dressed in black, on a dark brown horse. We can feel the movement, the rush, the tension of the battle. Here, Robert painted using bright warm colors, which make the dark Wellington so noticeable. In the sky, we can see two colors confronting and mixing each other, blue on the left and red on the right. Can we say it is an undeliberated choice of color to depict the fight between French in blue and the British in red? Possible. What else do we see? A furious cavalry charge in the background. If we now compare both pictures, we could see that they are both very martial friendly. On both, we see artillery. Remember that Napoleon was a artillery officer. He also strengthened the artillery use. At that time, artillery was the best and the most valuable weapon. We also see battle damages, dead corpse. Even though in Wellington's, we only see the dead French and only wounded English. On both, we see soldiers almost worshipping their leaders looking at him with admiration, almost like a living god. But both Wellington and Napoleon are on horses, posing. Both are staring at the horizon, not looking at somebody. We also see an ingenious use of lights and contrast to put forward those great leaders, but without obliterating the other figures present. Their position and the way they are painted compared to the look of their men is extraordinary. Now let's see what they don't have in common. On both we see dead or wounded soldiers. But with the English we see soldiers helping the wounded. In the Napoleon's one we can see one of Napoleon's guard looking at the corpses with a look of despair. Still in Napoleon's painting, we see Napoleon wearing a uniform, whereas Wellington is wearing something in between. We can also see a regiment flag on the floor in Waterloo's painting, which is a shocking thing, because this means a great dishonor or loss. In conclusion, the French and their old enemy, the British, have more in common, they would admit. Even during the Napoleonic Wars, where propaganda from both sides try to reject each other's influence, we can see similarities in paintings. On both sides, the way of depicting victory is quite similar. The use of light, the leader in the center of attention, being pictured as a living god, but with the contrast of being mortal, transcribed by their, by their attitude and the peril they are exposed to. Thank you for watching, and remember, there is no shame to be vanquished by a French.